Hello and welcome to week 14 of NFL Predictions. My name is Cedal and I'll be predicting each game this week, who wins and who loses. I think we have a lot of great games this week, so let's just get into it, starting with the 6-6 six six New England Patriots taking on the 8-4 Los Angeles Rams. The Patriots are coming off of a surprising blowout win over the Chargers, 45 to nothing, and the Rams are coming off of a win over the Cardinals, 38 to 28. And the Patriots' defense definitely showed what they could do against against the Chargers, shutting down their offense and picking off Herbert twice in that game. And it looks like Cam Newton and that offense has found a bit of a rhythm the past couple weeks. I don't think it's going to be enough against the Rams, though. I think they're the better all-around team, especially on defense, only allowing 312 yards and 20 points a game. I'm going to go with the Rams on this one, 24-20 to over the Patriots. And now we have the 6-6 six and six Arizona Cardinals taking on the 5-7 and seven New York Giants. The Cardinals are coming off of a loss from the Rams, 38-28, to which is a three-game losing streak. And the Giants are coming off of a big win over the Seahawks, 17-12. to That makes a four-game win streak for them. And their defense has definitely stepped it up the past few weeks, only allowing 15 points on average the past three games. And on the other hand, their offense has struggled a lot this season, only averaging 19 points, 327 yards a game. And while the Cardinals' defense has struggled, the pa- uh, has struggled a lot the past few weeks, their offense has been pretty consistent throughout the year. I think they're going to bounce back from the from their past three games, uh, their, their three game losing streak. I'm going to go Cardinals in a close 27-24 win over the Giants. And now we have the four and eight Houston Texans taking on the five and seven Chicago Bears. The Texans are coming off of a close loss from the Colts, 26 to 20. And the Bears are coming off of a, a close loss also from the Lions, 34 to 30, which makes a five-game losing streak for them. And the Texans' offense has been pretty consistent this year, averaging 24 points, 320, 379 yards a game. The Bears' offense, on the, on the other hand, has struggled at times this season. They're averaging 20 points, 331 yards a game. I do like the Bears' defense a lot more in this one, but I'm going to go with the Texans' offense. I'm going to say 24-23. I think it's going to be a really close game, but I'm going to go with Texans. And now we have the 3-8 and eight Dallas Cowboys taking on the 2-9-1 and nine and one Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are coming off of a loss from the Dolphins, 19-7, which makes a four-game losing streak for them. And the Cowboys actually haven't played yet this week. At the time I'm recording this, they actually play tomorrow, but I'm going to assume that there are no injuries that happen in that game. But both offenses have struggled a lot, especially the, the Bengals uh, this season, averaging 20 points compared to the Cowboys' 22 points a game. I, def- I definitely think the Bengals have the edge on defense, especially with the Cowboys allowing 32 points, almost 400 yards a game, and especially with a short week and traveling to the Bengals after playing at the Ravens. I'm going to go Bengals in this one. I think they pull out a win, a, a close 28-25 to win over the Cowboys. Now we have the 11-1 Kansas City Chiefs taking on the 8-4 Miami Dolphins. The Chiefs did let, win last week against the Broncos 22-16. to the Dolphins also won against the Bengals, like I said earlier, 19 to seven. And the Chiefs' offense has remained dominate the past few weeks, averaging 30 points and 435 yards a game. They have pulled out a lot of close, really close wins the past couple weeks, though. Their defense has still remained consistent, though, averaging 21 points, 367 yards allowed per game. I do think this is a, a game the Dolphins could win. I think it's in their hands, especially with their defense only allowing 17 points, 376 yards a game. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. I'm going to go with the Chiefs and their offense, 28-24. to I do think it's going to be a close game, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs. And now we have the 6-6 six and six Minnesota Vikings facing the 7-5 and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Vikings are, are coming off of a close overtime win over the Jaguars, 27-24. to And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are coming off of a loss from the Chiefs by the same score, 27-24. And they actually lost the week before by the same score, 27-24, to the Rams. Uh, and I do think the Buccaneers have been great on both sides of the ball this season, averaging 28 points and 371 yards on offense and only allowing 23 points and 350 yards on average on defense. Uh, and the Vikings defense has struggled a bit more, though, allowing 27 points, almost 400 yards a game. Their offense has been pretty solid this year and pretty consistent. I don't think it's going to be enough. I just don't trust their defense enough. I'm going to go 27-24 over the Vikings. And now we have the 4-8 and eight Denver Broncos facing the 4-8 and eight Carolina Panthers. The Broncos are coming off of a close loss from the Chiefs, 22-16. The Panthers are also coming off of a really close loss from the Vikings, 28-27. And I do think Teddy Bridgewater is going to pick up momentum the next few weeks. Even though he didn't have the best game against the Vikings, throwing a touchdown and an interception, 
Uh, I do think he's going to pick up momentum, and especially against the Broncos' defense that has struggled quite a bit uh, the past few weeks. And the Broncos' offense has also really struggled, with only, only averaging 18 points, 340 yards a game. I do think this is going to be an extremely close one. I, I think the Panthers just edge out the Broncos. I'm going to say 21-20 over the Broncos. Now we have the 8-4 Tennessee Titans facing the 1-11 Jacksonville Jaguars. The Titans lost last week against the Browns 41-35. The Jaguars also lost, like I said earlier, against the Vikings in, an, in overtime 27-24, which does make it an 11-game losing streak for them. And I, do, and I do think the Titans' defense has struggled the past couple weeks, especially against the Browns, allowing 41 points. Their offense has really kept them in a lot of their games this year, averaging 30 points and 400 yards a game. Their defense, though, is allowing also 400 yards and 27 points per game. Uh, I, I do think they still have the edge, even though their defense has been struggling. I think they still have the edge on defense, and especially since the Jaguars have allowed 27 points in four of their last five games. I'm going to go with the Titans in this one, 30-27 to 27 over the Jaguars. And now we have the 8-4 Indianapolis Colts taking on the 7-5 Las Vegas Raiders. The Colts won last week against the Texans 26-20. And the Raiders won in a close 31-28 victory over the Jets. And I do think the Colts have the edge on defense, allowing only allowing 22 points and 334 yards a game. Compared to the Raiders, 28 points, almost 29, and 385 yards allowed per game. But I also think the Colts have the edge on def on offense, only allow or averaging 27 points and, th and 378 yards a game. And I do think the Raiders are a team that could come out of nowhere and up and with an upset. But I'm going to go with the Colts 28 to 27 over the Raiders. And now we have the 0-12 New York Jets taking on the 8-4 Seattle Seahawks. The Jets are, are coming off of a close loss from the Raiders, 31-28, almost getting their first win of the year. And the Seahawks are also, are also coming off of a close loss from the Giants, 17-12. And I do think the Seahawks offense has been struggling the past couple weeks, especially last week against the Giants where they only scored 10 points. Russ Wilson had one touchdown and one interception in that game. But obviously the Jets have probably been the worst offense in the league, averaging 15 points, under 300 yards uh, a, a game. Uh, not much else to say here. I'm going to say 29-17 to 17 over the Jets. And now we have the 9-3 Green Bay Packers facing the 5-7 Detroit Lions. The Packers are won last week against the Eagles, 30-16. to 16, And the Lions also won last week against the Bears, 34-30. And while I do think the Packers have had one of the best offenses in the league, averaging 31 points, over 400 yards a game, I also think their defense has been really consistent this season, only allowing 24 points, 355 yards a game, and only allowing 16 against the Eagles. And the Lions defense has struggled a lot this season, averaging 30 points and 400, over 400 yards allowed per game. I'm going to go with the Packers here. I think it's going to be a double-digit win for them. I'm going to say 38-24 over the Lions. Now we have the 10 and 2 New Orleans Saints taking on the 3 8 and 1 Philadelphia Eagles. The Saints are co are coming off of a close win over the Falcons, 21 to 16, which does make a nine game win streak for them. And the Eagles are are coming off of a loss from the Packers, like I said earlier, 30 to 16, which is a four game losing streak for them. And I do think the Eagles' offense and Carson Wentz have struggled a lot the past few weeks, averaging 21 points. 346 yards a game, and the Saints offense has only been getting better, averaging 29 points, 382 yards, and their defense has also been one of the best in the league, averaging 20 points and 307 yards allowed per game. I think they add to the win streak. I think they win 30-20 to 20 over the Eagles. And now we have the 4-8 and eight Atlanta Falcons taking on the 3-9 and nine Los Angeles Chargers. The Falcons, like I said a few minutes ago, are coming off of a close loss from the Saints, 21-16. And the Chargers are coming off of a shutout loss from the Patriots, 45-0. to And I do think the Falcons have the edge in on offense in this one, uh, averaging 26 points to, to the Chargers, 23 points a game. The Chargers are averaging a few more yards, though, at almost 400 per game. But I definitely like the Falcons' defense a bit more, only allowing 25 points. They have allowed 300 yards uh, through the air on defense, though. And the Chargers have allowed 28 points and 348 yards per game, 224 of those being passing and 124 of those being rushing yards allowed. I do think it's going to be a somewhat close one, but I'm going to go with the Falcons, 30-24 to 24 over the Chargers. And then we have 5-7 and seven Washington taking on the 5-7 and seven San Francisco 49ers. Washington is coming off of a big win over the Steelers, handing the Steelers their first loss of the season. They won 23-17. 
The 49ers are coming off of a loss from the Buffalo Bills, 34 to 24. And Washington is on a three-game win streak right now, and their offense has really picked it up, especially against the Cowboys a couple weeks ago, scoring 41 points in that game. Their defense has even stepped it up, only allowing the Steelers to score 17 points and 21 points and 331 yards uh, on the season. So their defense has has been pretty solid this season. And I do think the 49ers are have been really inconsistent. They've really been on and off, especially on offense this season. I'm going to go Washington 24 to 17 over the 49ers. And now we have the 11 and 1 Pittsburgh Steelers facing the 9 and 3 Buffalo Bills. The Steelers, like I said, are are coming off of their first loss of the season against Washington 23 to 17. The Bills are are coming off of a win over the 40 or over the 49ers 34 to 24. I still think the 49ers have been the best all-around team this season, only allowing 17 points and 325 yards a game, and averaging 27 points, almost 28 points a game, and 352 yards uh, on average a game as well. The Bills have actually averaged the exact same amount of points this season. They have had a few extra, few more yards on average per game, 390 compared to 352 from the Steelers. Their defense has been significantly worse, though, allowing 25 points, 389 yards per game. I definitely think this is a, a game the Bills could take away from the Steelers, but I'm going to go Steelers win uh, in a close 31-27 to uh, win over the Bills. And now we have the 6-5 and five Baltimore Ravens taking on the 9-3 and three Cleveland Browns. The Ravens, like I said, the same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. They actually haven't played yet this week. They actually play tomorrow at the, sa- at the time I'm recording this, but I'm going to assume that nobody gets hurt in that game. But the Browns are, are coming off of a big win over the Titans, 41-35, to which does make a four-game win streak for them. And while I do think the Ravens have had a great defense this season, only allowing 19 points, 351 yards allowed per game, and their offense has also been solid, only are averaging 25 points, 346 yards a game. But I do think the Browns have shown that they are a playoff caliber team this season. I'm going to go with the Browns in a close 35 or 34 uh, to 31 win over the Ravens. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to post your predictions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. But thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.